Good morning, Georgiana. Uh, this is Pastor Corky. Uh, I'm coming to you this morning here on Monday because honestly, uh, I, I just am not sleeping well. <laughs> Uh, I just wanted to share with our church family that my heart is both sick and saddened by what I'm seeing happen in our nation over the last uh, week uh, to 10 days. Um, and I just felt like that you needed to hear from your pastor this morning. Uh, one of the great pitfalls to being vulnerable and transparent as I'm being this morning is that uh, somebody could take my words and twist them uh, to mean something that uh, was not my heart or that uh, somehow something I might say uh, would come across as insensitive, and that's certainly not my heart this morning. Um, I'm just, I'm just sick. Uh, I am, I'm befuddled as how we can still be in this place as a nation, right? That uh, there's a polarization that's been happening uh, for quite some time now. Not, I mean, it's, it's an age-old problem, 20 years maybe, uh, but we are so polarized right now as a country. Uh, we are polarized politically. We are polarized racially. We are polarized economically, for crying out loud. Uh, we're polarized now between maskers and non-maskers, uh, right? I mean, we just, uh, we just continue to find battle lines. And uh, we're a country on the edge. There's no doubt about that. Um, so here's what I want to say. I want to say a couple of things. Uh, and this may drag on a little bit longer than usual, but um, I want to make sure that we just are on one heart. Uh, first of all, we're a church that abhors, abhors racism. Uh, there is no place for it in our church. There is no place for it in our community. There is no place for it in our world. It is anti-biblical uh, to have uh, any aspect of racism uh, creep into uh, our life and our community. So uh, I want to be clear about that on the front side. I was raised by a woman who taught me how to be colorblind. It's probably the greatest gift uh, that she's given me. And subsequently, she gave it to her grandchildren. And so as I think about the memory of my mom the last few months, I think about all the good things that she passed on. And one of those was that um, she taught me how to be colorblind. And um, I worked in a world of sports where um, it didn't matter what the color of your skin was. It just mattered whether you did your job and you showed up to work and uh, and came together and were united as one behind the mission. I also live with a woman who for 36 years at kindergarten uh, taught her children, uh, see no one as them. See no one as them, only see them as us. I think we lose sight of the fact that every human being walking this planet is somebody for whom Jesus died. I, I just don't know how we can get past that, right? As soon as we use the phrase, those people, you have crossed over into sin. You have already defied the scriptures that you say you believe. We just can't continue to see anybody as those people. Uh, they're our brothers and our sisters. And while I hope that Georgiana has done a great deal to help um, cross what I believe is a racial divide in our community and in our world, um, I am, I'm sure we've not done enough. Uh, and for that, I assume some responsibility. Uh, second of all, I want to say there is no place for uh, violence. This response has been um, uh, shameful. It has, it has defied um, any sense of care and love for our brothers and our sisters. Uh, the collateral damage uh, in our communities is huge. Um, I, I think people ought to be able to gather. And I think people ought to be able to have their voices heard. And I think people ought to be able to walk and share their opinion. This is part of what being in America is about. Uh, but the destruction of property makes no sense to me. And I, I think we as a church want to say that we abhor violence as a response uh, to this, uh, that uh, we would want to be united in, in those thoughts. Um, it's, um, it's interesting to me that I think we're a community on the edge. Everybody's been isolated, quarantined, everybody's ready to snap. Uh, true story, I was at Publix the other day in the pharmacy line. I was about six deep. Uh, you know, Publix now where shopping is a corn maze. Um, but I was I was about six deep, and there was a woman at the front, and they, all three of the uh, pharmacy workers were trying to help this woman with whatever complications she had with her medications and whatnot. And you could just sense the tensions were growing, and everybody's a little bit on edge. And, and so I... Uh, <clears throat> I was in line with a buggy uh, to pick up my blood pressure medicine. 
Um, and I got out of line to go look at some vitamins. When I came back, the woman that had been standing behind me was now in front of my cart. And um, I was like, and we're still, the line's not moving now. She's there. And um, she turns around and looks at me because clearly I am befuddled. And she says, listen, your, your grocery cart is not a placeholder in line. You left the line, so I moved ahead. Okay. I mean, what do you do in that situation, right? You can, you can escalate it or you can just try to exercise some liquid grace. And so I, I just nodded my head. And, but she felt the need to keep turning around because you know why? Because this is what sin and guilt does. It makes you feel like you need to defend it. And finally, I had to tell her, I said, ma'am, if getting your medicine just a few minutes ahead of me is more beneficial to you, then so be it. I got nowhere to go but home. And so, uh, uh, so anyway, uh, just about this time, I realized she's wearing a church t-shirt. Thank God it wasn't ours, right? Thank God it wasn't one of ours. I, I just kept thinking as I stood there, I said, dear God, I, I hope none of us behave this way, especially while wearing something that declares that we're part of a community of faith that declares that Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior and our answer to all things, Right? So I want to share a passage of scripture with you today um, that I hope will help us recenter ourselves. It says, anyone who claims to be in the light but hates a brother or sister is still in the darkness. Anyone who loves their brother and sister lives in the light and there is nothing in them to make them stumble. But anyone who hates a brother or sister is in the darkness and walks around in the darkness. They do not know where they are going because the darkness has blinded them. Listen, I, this is why we spend so much time talking about repelling darkness and being light on a hill. This is our mission. This is our call. Listen, we're living in a country now that this is a reflection of the fact that uh, God has so removed his hand from our country. And anybody who would deny that uh, is not paying attention, right? This I'm not talking about prayer in schools and Ten Commandments on a courthouse wall. I'm talking about literally the heart of the Holy Spirit not dwelling inside a nation of people. I, I literally, we, those that are faithfully following Jesus Christ, we, we are like exiles that have come home and are trying to spread the word. We have got to be light in the darkness. We have got to not be a part of uh, pouring fuel on darkness. We've got to purge the sin in our own lives, right? So here, here's what I would say in light of all of this, uh, is that, that I think love is the answer. So I got a call the other day from a, uh, a local newspaper reporter wanted me to have a comment on uh, the tension in our country and all of those kind of things. And I said, I, I'm not sure you're going to like my answer, but I'm, I'm happy to share my heart. And here's my heart on this. I, I think our nation has a Jesus problem. I think we have a Jesus problem. I think, I think the problem in our country is that we don't have enough people with Jesus in their hearts. We just have selfishness and darkness and evil and sin. Man, our nation needs Jesus more than ever. Uh, so I said, uh, I, I don't think you'll probably use that. And she laughed and said, yeah, there's a pretty good chance I'm not going to use that quote. But it was interesting. Thank you for that perspective. But, but I wanted you to know my heart this morning that... Um, that I'm going to be using our 1119 prayer time to pray for our nation, to pray healing, that, that I believe through prayer uh, that we can begin to call upon God to come, right, and rescue our, our country, to rescue the world, really, from all the darkness and evils that perpetrate it. Um, you know, there's, there's just so much darkness, and we need to uh, be bodies of light. So, uh, Georgiana, I thank you for allowing me to... Uh, just ramble this morning uh, from a pastor with a broken heart. Uh, so um, may you uh, be blessed today and may you find ways to bless others. May you be light as you walk about on, around our community. I love you more than words can say. And I am thankful uh, that we are a church that is training ourselves uh, in the ways of the light. Love you and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.